Every minister I know has a sort of signature closing, commonly called the charge to the congregation. I'm no different. I've been using the same one for many, many years now. But what does it really mean? Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Tuesday, March 8th, 2022. If you visit different churches, either in person or online, pay attention to what the minister says at the close of worship right before the benediction. She or he will almost invariably use the same charge week in and week out or some variation on it. Some come directly from Scripture, and especially from the letters of Paul, for he often closes his letters with a charge to the congregation he's writing. Grammatically speaking, these are written in the imperative mood, the same as one would use when giving a command or making a direct request. Paul might say, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Or he might say, Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. These and other imperatives in Paul's letters have been used by countless ministers when it comes time to charge the congregation. My charge is a little different. I don't quote Paul or any other biblical text for that matter. Each and every Sunday, I end the service with the words, Friends, go forth now from this place, refreshed, restored, renewed. And then I nearly always add a sentence related to the day's sermon theme. Although these words do not come from Scripture, I use them because I believe they communicate something that is true to the spirit of Scripture. Now, I honestly don't remember where I came up with these words, whether I heard them from someone else and liked them, or how I came to use them each week. But here's what they mean to me. Sunday is the Christian Sabbath. With the exception of a few minor denominations, Christians have celebrated their Sabbath on Sunday rather than on Saturday. In Jewish practice, the Sabbath is Saturday because it is the seventh day, the day when God rested. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Christians began observing the Sabbath on Sunday to remember the resurrection. But as with the Jewish Sabbath, it has always been a day of rest. In the last few generations, unfortunately, we've largely lost the idea of rest, except perhaps as a day off from work. But many of us work as hard or harder on Sunday than we do any other day of the week. It should not be so. Observing a day of rest is as important today as it has ever been. We human beings need some rest because we're not superhuman. In addition to being a Sabbath day, a day of rest, Sunday is also represented for us a time to take stock, to think about our lives in light of what God is doing, and to reorganize our priorities. Many of us regard Sunday worship as a time to reflect on the week gone by and to gain strength for the week ahead. And at our best, we preachers provide a weekly message that is equal parts hope and challenge, comfort and an incitement to action. My weekly charge to be refreshed, restored, and renewed plays off this basic dynamic. It is a recognition that we need regular refreshment in the sense that we need to start the week fresh, not dragging. At its best, Worship provides that sense of refreshment. It echoes the words of the psalmist who said, As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. We need God just as surely as we need physical nourishment. To be refreshed in this sense is to be given strength for the new week. Now, I don't leave it there. Being refreshed, restored, and renewed is fine and dandy, but it's pretty general, pretty, pretty generic. I nearly always add words related to the day's message. In this sense, I'm doing much the same as Paul, 
tying the charge to the day's message. It's usually a one-sentence summary of the day's sermon. For example, yesterday's sermon was about the importance of practicing the regular spiritual disciplines we do in the church. The charge reflected this. I said, go forth from this place ready to walk the walk that is Lent and take part in our Christian disciplines. Okay, maybe not the most rousing charge I've ever given, but it surely reflected the theme of the day. And it was an appropriate way to send a group of refreshed, restored, and renewed disciples into a new week. When we return tomorrow and for the rest of the week, we'll look at a couple more commonplace charges and we'll finish out the week looking at some of the at two of the most common benedictions we use. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.